Thank you, Grant. Um, and uh, the reason Graham said it's a little outdated is because um, my bio is a little outdated is because I'm actually moving to Boston in January to start a job at a venture capital firm as an analyst. Um, so more on that in a bit. But uh, let's get on with the panel. Um, so today's panel, um, it's really lucky that we had a pitching session earlier because my panelists basically introduced themselves. Um, but. Um, uh, let me let me basically introduce to this audience their credentials re with respect to their individual open source CMSs. Um, Steve uh, runs the New York WordPress meetup, and um, he is um, he also is, is the CEO of Slipfire, as he mentioned earlier. And uh, you know it's all about um, helping businesses use the web more efficiently. Um, then there's Ezra Gildas Game who is an active member of the Drupal community, um, and he's also a contributor to the Drupal, Drupal itself in, in the form of modules, and um, he has also participated in this year's Google Summer of Code. Um, he's pretty active um, in Drupal user groups, and um, he's spoken at a couple of um, open source summits and um, conferences in, the, in that topic um, in Sunnyvale, as well as in New York City and Denver. And uh, he's currently with Growing Venture, Venture Solutions. And then we have Donna, um, who is uh, the principal of Joom Sites LLC, uh, which is basically a web, de a web development uh, firm that specializes in Joomla web, um, Joomla based sites, basically. And uh, she's also active in the Joomla community, and uh, she maintains the New York Joomla Users Group website, which presumably I hope is written in Joomla. Yes. Great. <laughs> so, um, so as for me, um, by day I, I, I track the enterprise software industry for um, a boutique research firm, the 451 Group, um, whose name comes from the burning point of paper, Fahrenheit 451, um, the novel. And um, um, content management is, um, you know, one of the areas you know we as a firm deal with. Um, I'm not the lead analyst on content management, but uh, I know enough about the area to be dangerous. Um, and I also have an interest outside my day job in the open source um, platforms we're going to discuss today. So I know there's a, um, w what I hope to um, see here is I, I, I noticed from the pitching session that there were a lot of service providers, entrepreneurs, and other enthusiasts in each of these platforms. And um, a lot of people swear by their, their platform and I hope we can get a great conversation going here. Um, I hope to whip up some controversy, so um, you know, let's uh, let's keep that in mind uh, because that'll be the way it's the most engaging and most useful to everybody. Um, so great, I am going to I, because it's kind of a mixed audience technically. I'm going to briefly define what a content man content management system really is, and um, then I'll open it up uh, for some basic questions to uh, the panel, uh, who and each of the panelists will answer these in turn. And then, um, after a couple of these basic questions, I'll open it out to the audience. Um, you know, I'm sure there'll be many questions, and I'll insert some questions of my own um, once the open dialogue begins. So, content management systems. Well, what is content? Um, the universe of content is really two kinds of content. There's unstructured content and structured content. Structured content is in databases and all of that fun stuff, um, and it's the minority of content. The majority of content, by far, is unstructured content, which is could be anything from text, videos, music, audio, um, you know, podcasts, what have you, um, as well as web content. And a content management system basically manages this content. So um, it it creates ways for it provides ways for create for creating um, this content, for editing this content, maintaining multiple versions of this content, um, you know, authorizing people to publish, unpublish this content. Anything you could possibly do with content, a CMS can do. Within the CMS market, there's two kinds. Again, there's enterprise content management, there's web content management. We're not going to talk about enterprise content management today. What we're going to talk about is web content management, um, which is basically a content management system which is structured as a web application. Um, you know, everything is browser based, and you, know, you can go to town, create content, publish content, unpublish content, version content. Um, now, within the web content management market, of course, there's you know, vendors, there's sort of commercial web content management you know, products, as well as open source um, uh, platforms. Among the, just to give an overview of the market, there's um, 
you know, pretty large vendors like Vignette, Interwoven, um, as well as sort of smaller vendors like Day Software, Fatwire, a um, bunch of these um, vendors that basically sell web content management products. But on the other hand, uh, there's also open source content management systems like Drupal, like Joomla, as well as WordPress, um, which are uh, basically open source, and um, some, in some cases they have companies backing them, in some cases they don't. Um, and you know, there's basically um, a community forming around these content management systems to create you know, new and innovative websites um, you know, which make the process of managing content much easier um, and for less, uh, for, for low cost because it's open source. So that is the relevance of open source content management systems to this audience, that it's low overhead, low cost. So um, I am going to start out by just um, asking each of, the, each of our panelists to give a 30 second pitch, you're familiar with this, with this deal from before, of you know, what is you know, WordPress, what is Drupal, what is Joomla. Steve? Uh, thank you. So WordPress uh, primarily started out as a blogging platform, but uh, bas basically using categories and tags and uh, its PHP uh, code, the development of a very easy plug-in architecture and theme architecture became a, a CMS. Um, a simple CMS, but also a very powerful CMS uh, due to the fact that it can be expanded uh, quickly and easily. And I, I think that one of the benefits of WordPress is that a, a beginner, somebody who doesn't know any program, can get up and running literally within minutes, or somebody who's more advanced can totally customize a, uh, a full website using WordPress as well. Great, thanks. Okay. Thanks. So Drupal is a content management framework or content management platform, depending on who you talk to. And it's really angled towards two groups of people. Uh, one group is people who are power users and want to build a site by pointing and clicking and, don't, and not writing any code. And so it gives those people a lot of power to customize their site and make it uh, you know, highly flexible without writing code. At the same time, it makes it very efficient for people who can write code, developers, to build an even more specific customized site. And it's geared towards uh, social networking and community publishing, where lots of people interact around content. Okay, Joomla is the ultimate content management system. Joomla can be used for a wide variety of websites. Uh, there are over 4,000 uh, components for Joomla, and they range from calendars to social networking to a YouTube clone. Um, I can't even think of a uh, type of a website that you wouldn't be able to use Joomla for. You can use Joomla for uh, uh, e-commerce. Uh, you can use it for a company intranet. And it's very easy to uh, customize the components. Great. Awesome. Um, so <clears throat> basic questions. Um, what you know? You mentioned a little bit each of you, you know, about what kinds of websites have been built in your in your on your project. But generally speaking, if you could go a bit more into that, that would be great. Also, you know, in which kind of vertical markets, you know, like which industries are, is it particularly well suited for? You know, which geographies is is it, is it popular in? Um, and um, you know, just some sort of well known sort of marquee sites names that use each of these um, projects. Um, actually, one thing I forgot to mention is. Um, um, we actually have um, Scott, Laura, and David um, who will be assisting um, Donna with some answers. So I just wanted to mention their names as well. That's, so that's cheating. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're not. Okay. Like so so Juno needs more people. <laughs> <laughs> so um, back to the question. So just um, that's a lot of questions. Yeah. Um, it is, but, uh, all right, I'm going to go through because I think you uh, gave us a whole list here. But um, first off, there are over 10 million websites run on WordPress right now. Uh, some of them are hosted by uh, the guy at WordPress.com. It's about 50-50. Uh, like WordPress.com and self-hosted. So we're talking about 10 million websites that are out there. Um, and in terms of, uh, I think Drupal and Joomla have modules. WordPress calls them plugins. There are about 3,500 official plugins, uh, but there are thousands more that just have not been uploaded to the WordPress site yet. The, 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 the plugin directory is rather new and they're a little backlogged. So, I, I would guess it's probably double that, so about 8,000 plugins. And it, it ranges from everything to a simple uh, contact form to full e-commerce to 
uh, gallery video. I mean, it, it, it's, I mean, really, when talking about contact management systems, and I think we'd all agree, you could do almost anything with, with these, uh, um, with, with these systems. In terms of, and also themes, uh, the WordPress community is really great with themes. Is uh, th and the theme directory is very backlogged. Is they only have 700 posted, but I do know there are probably about 5,000 uh, themes that are that are available out there. Um, other stats, real quick. I, I know you want you want to big on the, on the stats. Um, this is November stats from uh, WordPress.com. They're real good with the work with uh, stats. 994. Um, million page views, 995 million pages, just in November alone. On WordPress. On, Word, on WordPress.com. This is not. This is not the other sites that are out there. This is. This is hosted just by WordPress. So that's about talking about 4.5 million websites getting about a trillion uh, page views, and with all of them, it's about a trillion eight. So about a trillion eight hits. Um, pay up using page views just in November alone. I mean, the, the, the community's big. It's a big community. And that's one of the things that makes WordPress so. Um, so amazing. Um, where is it used? Mostly English. Uh, okay. Okay. So you want you want some marquee sites? Is that, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. You had like six questions. That's why it wasn't, yeah. It wasn't so what are some? We need a content management system to help us keep track. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. Exactly. And I would recommend Drupal. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Real but, quick. Yeah. Um, the the blog portions, and I, and I will be clear on the blog portions of uh, um, the Wall Street Journal, CNN, um, New York Times, Yahoo, um, actually Mashable. Which I'm sure most of you know, TechCrunch, all built on WordPress, 100% built on WordPress, Smashing Magazine, built on WordPress, uh, GigaOM, built on WordPress, and, and uh, all things D, built on WordPress. Are there any non blog marquee sites? I mean, are there any non blog marquee sites? Uh, yep. That's a good question. I don't think there are. Okay. I really don't. All right. Answer. Okay, so I'm going to try to keep sure, track all those questions. So, uh, Drupal uh, is used all over the world, it has a really robust uh, translation system built in that makes it very efficient to translate both the content and the interface. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's literally used all over the world. Um, <clears throat> there are so, so some marquee sites that you might be interested in are TheOnion.com, which is a popular newspaper. Um, Sony BMG Music is using Drupal for virtually all of their artist sites. And they've built a, a robust um, online music listening service, which is kind of an advanced web application called MyPlay which is built entirely in Drupal and has resulted in a lot of code being contributed back to the community. Uh, of course, Warner Brothers has followed along with that, and I guess we can name Britney Spears for the third time tonight, because her site is running Drupal as well. Um, other, uh, other major publications like Fast Company and Popular Science are running uh, Drupal for their sites, and it's also used in a number of other capacities by organizations, uh, including Harvard Science, so the stem cell doctors who are collaborating with one another are using, are using uh, Drupal to, to communicate. Uh, NASA using it on some sites along with some of the names that you mentioned, Yahoo, uh, as well as companies like Novell and uh, IBM has put out some, uh, some good documentation on how to develop with Drupal. Um, other questions? Um, <coughs> well, I want to know about stats. Okay, so in 2008, there were about 700 uh, developers contributing to the core of Drupal, which is the is the Drupal software that everyone has. And then there were over uh, 2,000 people contributing to uh, the contributed modules and themes. So things like that are analogous to plugins that you can download to extend your functionality. Uh, we've got over 2,600 modules uh, in the Drupal repository and they're really great and about like 350, I think, themes that are available uh, for free and you can, you can purchase more and of course have them made custom. There are, uh, about 100,000 as of uh, mid-November <coughs> Drupal sites that are pinging back to Drupal.org, meaning that they are uh, reporting, yes, I'm a Drupal site and I'm out here in the wild. However, you know, not all Drupal sites are actually pinging back. Uh, pinging back is optional and it's a relatively new feature. There were like uh, 1.4, Drupal, the Drupal software was downloaded 1.4 million times between July 07 and June 2008. And that number was double the previous year. So it's really growing in popularity. All right. Thank you. Don. OK. Um, Joomla has uh, over 100,000 members on its forum. Uh, some of the sites that use Joomla are the United Nations, uh, MTV Networks. They have a social networking site called Quizilla. Uh, LA Weekly It's an online publication. IHOP, the restaurant chain. Harvard University um, has a section of their website that's on Joomla. Uh, Citibank has a, their intranet runs on Joomla, which is not publicly accessible. 
uh, Outdoor Photographer Magazine, uh, PlayShakespeare.com, Senso Interiors Furniture Design. Cool. Uh, so how large is the development community and uh, just sort of analogous to what they said, you know, how many plugins and what are the kinds of volume well, we're seeing on Joomla? There's been a tremendous growth in extensions for Joomla. When I started with Joomla three years ago, there were 750 extensions in the Joomla extensions directory. There are now over 4,000 in three years. It grew from 750 to 4,000. All right, great, thanks. Um, I'm going to open it up to the audience for some questions. Anybody have a question they want to ask? Wow. Yes, you raise your hand first. Um, Steve, I wonder if you could speak a little about um, WordPress Move and how that's different from the other. Sure. It's a it, so WordPress new or MU is actually stands for multi-user. So with one WordPress install, you're able to run hundreds or thousands of websites. In fact, if you go to WordPress.com, they are using WordPress MU. Literally, you're creating. Um, individual sites, it's the same WordPress that everyone uses, it's just it's a, it, there's a wrapper around it. Um, so essentially if you had ultralightstartups.com and I wanted a site, I would be steve.ultralightstartups.com. Initially, you can, I can't get my own domain name, steve.com, run it off of there. Um, I have access to themes, plugins, and just allows the, the uh, admin to run it more efficiently. Gentleman here. Well, I was just going to ask if the uh, Drupal guy and the uh, Whippers guy brought really cool handouts like the team <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't have handouts, but what I do have is they only gave me four, but I have four coupons for a free copy of uh, Drupal in Action, which is a book that I'm writing and I will plug shamelessly to help people get up to speed on using Drupal. But on a, on a, more, on a, more, on a more serious note, I did, I did want to ask a one question about um, kind of like uh, contrasting uh, sites that are uh, brochureware. Which is something kind of like you know when we talk about startups, we're like, okay, well, you know, what is your model? You know, and, and we start kind of like, well, it sounds like you're just talking about you know everything, which sure. um, And kind of contrasting that with um, uh, an open source uh, approach. And I wanted to ask uh, the first question is, can for each of you, can you name like name one uh, like startup that they had they had a business model and they came and they, they did their their functionality. They they took a CMS and they designed it from ground up, but now they're really successful. Um, kind of. Uh, Speaking to the list, you all have various uh, sites that are using all, and it seems like they fall into a couple of categories. They're either like all just like brochureware, like where there's, there's like all blogs and things. I'm like wondering like where the business technology is that you can use open source for is, um, and then the other side um, is, a, and a lot of them seem like they're really big and established, like you know it's Harvard and NASA and the United Nations and things like this. So where is the relevance for startups that actually have a business model that goes beyond brochureware? that they can use one of these three open source platforms to develop that business model. And then, uh, there'll be other questions, but then I'd also then you come back to the second question later. Let's be our human. Which I just represent your question. Well, because, because, because that question includes both uh, okay. content management as well as implied open source content management. Okay. And I'm really just addressing content management at this point. Okay, very good. Um, you know, to add to that a little bit, um, just a very simple question, you know, to what degree can an ultralight entrepreneur take one of these CMSs, open source CMSs, and, you know, out of the box and get going, basically, you know, beyond brochure, whereas, as you just said. Well, a couple things. First off, um, the reference to the handout, WordPress doesn't need a handout. I mean, you're up and running in 30 seconds. There's no reason for paper instruction. So you wouldn't need anything to do that with. Um, uh, essentially, the WordPress plugin architecture allows you to do virtually anything you want. I mean, and, and even more powerful, it allows you to connect to other third uh, party applications as well, other open source software. So there is a way to do it. So if you are comfortable with other pieces of app, uh, open source, you can, you can easily integrate it to, with WordPress with, with a plugin there right now. So it really makes it incredibly powerful. At the core, WordPress is a text content management system. That's what it was built on. But the plugin architecture, which is really powerful, incredibly powerful. Um, and that's why there's thousands and thousands of plugins being built every day. It allows you to do virtually anything you want with it. Yes, right. Sure. So, I mean, Drupal has a similar philosophy of being able to do anything that you want to do. Um, and we've had features that are common to, to uh, sort of next generation Web 2.0 sites for a while. And we, so we've got a handle on doing them well. Uh, user management, users with roles and a distinct permission system. Uh, I'm going to take a step back because I want to go right to because so one of the things that you said actually goes right to the ultralight startups general idea, which is you you don't need forty million dollars to make your website. And so what Drupal allows you to do 
using all of the, uh, is, is basically um, do that really efficiently. Uh, I don't know if I sound like Sarah Palin right now. I think I just <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to answer like 14 different questions at the same time. So I beg your pardon. Are you Maverick? Drupal the Maverick? Yeah. <laughs> Drupal's like, it's like a pile of Mavericks. Sorry, actually, can I make reference to that? Sure. Yeah. Actually, two yeah. things that you made reference to was actually an uh, ultralight startup and Sarah Palin, which, was anyone here uh, at last month's uh, ultralight startup meeting? I know I was. I, I know Brown was as well. Um, and I wish Ronald was here because he, uh, he's, he's a, uh, an active member. But Ronald uh, actually was one of the best advocates for WordPress. He was working with a group that wanted to put together a, a, um, a Sarah Palin site, how women responded to Sarah Palin. In fact, it's called women responding to sarahpalin.com. And he chose WordPress and he had it up and running in one day. He never used WordPress before. Now, he's a programmer, so he's familiar with PHP. But in one day, he had an uh, up and coming uh, a website up and running, and to what I understand, it was pretty successful. Twenty thousand hits in a day. Yeah. In, in, okay. in one particular day, I would like to see yeah, now. <laughs> <laughs> an, an answer to Forrest's question about a website that's not just a brochure website. A few months ago, I set up a website for um, uh, an e-commerce site for mixtapes, and within a few weeks, that site was getting thirteen thousand hits a day. Wow. All right. Um, so let's start with you this time, actually. I have one question to ask you. Um, you wanted to ask a question? Yeah, yeah. I yeah. have a question. Um, as, I, as I said before, uh, I'm an uh, e-commerce business owner, so I'm very interested in uh, using how to use the Joomla. But the thing is, um, would you have any recommendation, like if I don't know anything about even the WordPress before, um, any reference that I can uh, help me to learn how to use this? Is it going to be very easy to install to use and then and use the Joomla yes. to build up a website? Yes. And very how easy. did you get the several like um, so many hits? Is it because of the content management so that it uh, automatically uh, improve your SEOs or uh, what's the reason? No, I I Same don't. Question. Okay, question. I don't believe that you can get. Uh, that kind of traffic with just SEO. I'm sorry? I don't believe that you can get a tremendous amount of traffic just from SEO. I think that you have to advertise and market your business. Okay. I know a lot of people want to spend like uh, uh, $5,000 for um, uh, SEO consultations, but that's not going to do it. You have to advertise on Google. You have to market your business. Okay. Um, for the question, one second, I'll get to you guys. Um, what is the sort of service provider ecosystem like? Are there many service providers, and you know, what are some of the you know red flags and green flags an ultralight entrepreneur should look out for? Uh, you know, when choosing a service provider for mm -hmm. you know for Joomla and you know, so on for others. But I'll start with you. Um, what do you mean by service provider? So you know, web design firms who you who oh, will okay. contract with you to develop. Um, you know, a site in Joomla or a site in Drupal, and so on and so forth. But for Dru for Joomla, what would you say? Um, you know, the service provider market is like. Are there many of them? You know, what is the quality uh, of them, and yeah. what are the things you need to look out for? Okay, there are sites devoted to uh, uh, Joomla freelancers. It's called Joomlancers, and I think there are some other ones also. Uh, the and the Joomla forum, uh, you can find uh, a section for uh, Joomla developers. Mm -hmm. Um, it depends on what your needs are. If you need someone who's going to stay with you for the long term, then you're going to need somebody who has an actual company who's located locally. Um, I don't know if Scott. Yeah. Want to say? I mean, I mean, one of the things about Joomla that makes it makes Joomla very, very good is that it's a template system, so you can have any graphic designer can design it, even in Photoshop. And you can easily cut that out and maneuver in the little areas they have into that. The back end, though, in Joomla 1.5, the core is going to divide it from the content. So you can play more, the, play more of the content area, the CMS, without breaking down the permissions and everything else in the back end. So that makes it very robust. So you can have people in Vietnam work in one section, your local artists working on your front end, and you leave the core alone. So that gives you a, a lot of flexibility that um, some of the other CMS systems just don't have, or they have them, but the, the degree of difficulty, the degree of learning curve is so high, it's so robust, it, it's beyond what most people can do. You have, you have to really know what you're doing to get into some of the systems. 
and the other end is that they're too simple, so they can't really do what you need to do. Yeah. Sure, green and red flag. So with Drupal, um, something that you really want to look for is demonstrated experience building in Drupal, and especially community involvement. Drupal's got a really active user community of developers, and one way that you can see whether someone is really expert is that they've probably commuted, uh, sorry, con contributed to that community. So uh, you can, for service providers, you can see whether they're listed <clears throat> on the Drupal.org service provider page. And also, for each individual developer on the team, you can ask to see their Drupal.org user ID. And you can literally go to that page and see a list of every interaction they've had with the community, all the code they've contributed back, all the discussions they've participated in. And so if somebody has uh, participated in building the tool that they're using, they're much more likely to be expert at using it. And Drupal is a system that can sometimes have some appeal for PHP developers who aren't familiar with Drupal's APIs, and you'll find that you'll have a much more uh, efficient building experience if you use those APIs and you're familiar with best practices and you do it right. Um, somewhat similar to what Ezra said about uh, about Drupal, I mean the, the WordPress.org site does list um, does list official developers. Um, the plugin site, which li again lists about four uh, or four, five thousand plugins. You can easily see you, you can easily see who's developed uh, who, who the most popular plugins are and and click on the author and you would be able to see who that author is um, what they've contributed as well popularity feedback very very quickly um, the WordPress community is a is a huge community but yet it's really pretty tight you do know the major players you, you know who they are if you're in there but if you do want to find if you're looking for a program you're looking for somebody you're going to want to go to WordPress.org site and you want to look on the developers you're going to want to look at um, the plugin developers, if you want something a little bit more advanced. All right, great. I saw some questions over there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Maybe in this function, they're all created equal. But I know it's really important when you're building a site for it to be search engine optimized. Even if that doesn't give you all the marketing revenue, it is. It does contribute to your success. So the question pretty much centers on. I know the the load time for the first page determines how the search engine looks at your at, at your website. So. For, for all three other content management systems, which one would you say allows you to create the most like tightly packed first page or first few pages and allows the spiders to really get in there and crawl so the search engine can really get through it? And like why? Why each one would code it differently? Well, a couple of, I mean, I'm going to answer the core, uh, you know, your yeah, core question, which yeah. is really just search engine optimization. How do you get in there? So yes. <clears throat> WordPress is really search engine optimized. I mean, it, Google loves WordPress. Um, I'm not just saying that. Honestly, there are there are a number of uh, Google employees who uh, constant, consistently blog about WordPress's uh, search engine optimization features. There are, there are YouTube videos about it all over the place, and I can get I can uh, reference you them. Mm -hmm. um, actually, Matt Cutts, who is um, I, I actually wrote it down here because I know um, he, he uh, he's really uh, pretty well known and he talks about it all the time. But he is a he's the head of Google's uh, WebSpan team. And um, he's one of their head software engineers. Go to Matt Cutts' blog. Head Google, he's a big Google guy. Always talks about WordPress SEO. I'll give you one quick example. You know, my company we play around with a lot of websites to test things out, and we, uh, you know, for our for our clients. And one of the things we did was um, pull our test feeds from YouTube. So we we tried to we did this. We took we automatically uh, subscribed to a, a YouTube uh, subscriber um, publisher. And we pushed, we pulled their YouTube videos and we put it into a WordPress website. Same title that was in YouTube, just the video. Um, if you searched on some of those videos, they came up in Google higher than YouTube. The WordPress page came up higher than YouTube. It was, and it didn't happen all the time, but it happened a lot. And it was, it was, it was a shock to us, but it was really impressive. And, and one of the reasons we realized that is because one of our analytics went through the roof um, when one of those videos got really popular and we looked at it. So out of the box. WordPress is it, WordPress. I think is one of the most. Is, it, I don't know. I really don't know the, uh, these kind of management systems as well. But there's never been a question about the search engine. Was it a Britney Spears thing? It was not a Britney Spears. <laughs> <laughs> it was not a Britney Spears. It would have crashed our server. Probably. Drupal Drupal does great with search engine optimization out of the box, and there are a number of contributed modules you can add to make it even more uh, search engine friendly uh, with features without getting too technical, like. Clean URLs and 301 redirects. So when a page uh, URL changes, you can let Google know that it's moved, and you don't lose all of the records for that page. But you mentioned a dense, information-rich page, and that's something that Drupal actually empowers users to create without having to write custom code. So we have a number of modules uh, that sort of follow that philosophy of empowering users and actually eliminating the developer, which is 
part of the state of philosophy of the project that let people create their own custom content types and their own custom displays of content. And so you can have one page. Uh, there's a module called Panels that allows you to have, uh, create pages where you have this rich drag and drop interface and you can drag customized displays of content in. And so that's really appealing to users who don't have a developer or don't want to hire a developer so that they can really get in there and not just manage the content but display it however they want without writing a line of code. Got it. Uh, well, Joomla uh, 1.5 has uh, one-click uh, search engine friendly uh, um, optimization, and uh, I think that uh, it would depend with Joomla. Mid-sized companies that provide uh, support for Drupal professionally, and then there's also uh, you mentioned uh, is there a no is there a Red Hat for Drupal, and there there sort of is a Red Hat for Drupal that a lot of people uh, here have probably heard of called Acquia. And they offer uh, a number of services that they explain really well on their site. But generally, they offer enterprise level support. And they offer a subscription service where you can install Acquia Drupal, which is basically like, uh, it's the same community modules that everyone else is using, but it's, it's a special distribution from Acquia. And then Acquia will recommend when you should and shouldn't update those modules and provide other kinds of support for your site. So they're there to really uh, represent you know, the, the expert enterprise level support. Um, of course, you can always go with another provider, but they're they're the big guys. Yeah, um, Donna. Um, I don't know of any. Yeah. No, I mean, I mean, Joomla's own, Joomla itself, the copyrights are owned by Open Source Matters. Okay. Um, but there is no, and we do have a centralized system for bug checking and so forth and right. security. But we're really open. It's an open source project in the truest right. sense of the word. Okay, makes sense. Well, maybe you have at least a phone number of someone we could call and yell at. So an ultra light startup wants to run things in the cloud. It works really well with our business models and our revenue streams. Uh, how cloud friendly is, are, are the platforms specifically uh, Drupal and WordPress is the first question. Uh, the, the other is uh, OpenID and supporting uh, OAuth and uh, those type of, uh, of newer ID and identity uh, technology. Um, you want to go? Sure, yeah. Uh, Drupal supports OpenID and Core as of Drupal 6. And as far as being cloud friendly, it is cloud friendly. I know that a bunch of people are running on Amazon's uh, Elastic Service uh, and then some of the other uh, services that are out there. So it does well on the cloud. Okay. Uh, yeah, WordPress was one of the first to support OpenID as well. And, um, and same thing with Amazon. That's where, that's where there are a lot of people running sites on Amazon. To put it on the cloud, though, how do you, um, if you're engaging, uh, we want somebody to go go to, to, uh, to, to do all the dirty plumbing. Yeah. You know? um, you could, I could do it on GoDaddy if I wanted, but I still got to get my hands dirty, right? That's a, a hosting provider that makes it very easy, but I still have to do a lot of, a lot of uh, hands-on. Yeah. Is there, who would you go to to, to do an Amazon or a... Uh, well, per, I mean, I would go to me and uh, go to <laughs> We have done sites in EC2, uh, and I, I bet there are probably some other service providers that do, and that's something that you can ask about when you contact a Google service provider. Um, and that's like a maintenance agreement, or is it just get it up and running and then hand it off? We do support agreements uh, as well. Okay. Do the Drupal folks have anything to say? Yeah. Uh, this Zoom Zoom. Zoom. Uh, Cloud and OpenID. I think there there is a third party uh, developer that has worked with OpenID and uh, Joomla, and I think they have some sort of a plugin. Um, I don't know about the cloud. If any, I've never used. I thought it was part of the core in Joomla. I'm going to go to what is sure. Open ID? Yeah, sure. Is it? Yeah. Is it? Oh, okay. Yeah, it's it's cool. No, no, absolutely. It's not something that I've worked with, so but I can't really address it. Probably one of the most busy Joomla sites is Quizilla, which gets like 40 million hits a week, and it's operating in, in its own little cloud. But you know, it's, it's very scalable, and you can break things apart, and, and definitely use a cloud capabilities. Okay, great. You sir, can you build uh, Facebook apps? Open social apps using any of these systems? Yes, in about 10 minutes. <laughs> oh, I got 10 minutes. Do I hear nine? <laughs> <laughs> or less, 10 minutes or less. Um, there are uh, template clubs that will design not only the template, but they'll package it with other components for Joomla. And uh, one is called Template Plaza. And one month they'll have uh, like a YouTube clone. 
and they'll have a whole complete site built in YouTube clone. It's one file that you download, you purchase and you download, you upload it to your server and um, unpack it and you've got your uh, YouTube clone up and running. All right. I mean, can you plug the apps in Facebook and open social likes? Oh. I'm not talking about the website. Cool. Can you create oh. mini apps that you can plug on all the uh, social networks? Yes. yes. The CMS systems? Yes. Okay. So, yes, yes. There, there are modules that support open social and, and Facebook API. I know that that's a really healthy area of development. Obviously, a lot of people want to get on those systems. And in general, Drupal is really API friendly. Uh, there, there are a lot of different ways that Drupal makes it really easy both to expose your site's data for uh, various different types of APIs and to import content and uh, interact with other external APIs, either because there's a ready-made solution or there's a framework uh, within Drupal that you can use that makes it really quick to uh, import data. Even There's even uh, like one example of that is the Feed API, which has uh, uh, a system where uh, it's, it's very easy in Drupal to create a custom content type. And then with the feed API, you can just point it at a feed, map the different feed elements in that feed to fields in your content type, and go. And it will uh, import content and submit it on your site. Great. Um, the original way to make, uh, create full apps uh, would work for, for Facebook. I mean, it's basic RSS feeds and things like that. What you can create is Facebook. Um, by the end of this month, you can buddypress.org, feel free to go there. You're going to be able to download, use WordPress MU and create, have your own hosted uh, Facebook app built on, uh, built on WordPress. That's great. Uh, I'm going to take one more question because we're running low on time, but please carry on the networking in Harry, I mean, Mustang Harry's. Um, you, sir. It's a two-part question. Has anybody had any experience or time uh, or even your development process of using it as a uh, prototype or wireframing into final product? And second, what's next and what are you afraid of? Mm. <laughs> so is what, are we, what are we afraid of? What are you afraid of? Mm. What keeps you out there? <laughs> <laughs> can, can you give it, is there like an example of what kinds of things you think that people in an open source project might be afraid of? Um, any platform, the next open source, the oh, next, okay. you know, like whether it's competition, otherwise we've done a number of work in CMS for years, back to, you know, mid-90s and developed many for clients specifically. And then as open source came available, it's much easier for us now. But we've had clients burn millions of dollars from one platform to the next, to the next, to the next. So I think that from a developer and a uh, creative standpoint, it's a big issue when you're talking about larger sites. And a lot of our sites grow over time. When you start, it's a couple hundred thousand, or uh, tens of thousands, and grow to hundreds of thousands. That's a huge investment to, to shift. Sure. And so you want to be sure you're on a, on a platform that exactly. can support growth. Growth model. Yeah. Well, we're definitely not afraid of growth on our sites in Drupal. Uh, Drupal scales really well. There are a lot of technical things I could spout at you about why that's the case, but there's a lot of attention uh, paid towards scalability. Uh, and generally, when you do a Drupal architecture, when you, when you build a Drupal site, um, one of the things you'll find is that it's not rigid. And so if you don't, if you're not ready to build version three of your application or your service, you can come out with version one. And then when you're ready, you can go to version two and add features that uh, build on the existing features you have without having to rip everything else out and start again. Done. Anyone in Mustang Harry's, I will completely disagree with that. I mean, not, not personally, but absolutely. Sure, I mean, if you do it, if you do it right, huge disagree with that. Um, as far as Joomla, there's, I don't think there's anything to be afraid of. Uh, Joomla is uh, growing uh, quite a bit since it started in 2000, the year 2000. There's over 200,000 community users and com contributors. Um, and the core team is, uh, I think they're fantastic. <laughs> the but core are you team are geniuses. <laughs> I mean, they're geniuses. What about future splits like Mambo, Joomla, you know, or, you know, Drupal becoming a victim of its own success? I mean, there have to be real fears here. I mean, just say Well, the hard. reason that uh, Joomla split from Mambo was that Mambo started out as open source. A lot of people contributed, and then the Mambo group wanted to close it. Mm -hmm. They didn't want it to be open source anymore after other people contributed freely of their time. And that's why Joomla split from Mambo. OK. Um, so though though the, uh, the majority of WordPress websites are magazine type, blog type, because it is, in the last year or so, it's really become more of a, a, a full application content management system, it is still supporting some of the most popular websites on the web. 
I mean, New York Times and Yahoo and World, uh, uh, Wall Street Journal. So in terms of scalability, it, WordPress doesn't have that issue. I mean, like I just said, the numbers are in the trillions in terms of uh, page views, so it's not an, an issue at all. Um, in terms of uh, future growth, the WordPress team and the WordPress community is a great, is an unbelievable uh, core community. Uh, there is no reason to fork it or, or a copy to go anywhere else. Um, they, they, they support it um, really well, and they're, they're, uh, they're making money doing it. And um, like I said, the community is, is real strong. There really, there really is no reason to, to, to fork it. It's, it's, it's a real solid piece of software. Okay. Right, I think one thing that applies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one thing that I think applies to, um, that all of us might be fearful of, so to speak, is that I think it's fairly safe to say that a certain amount, uh, amount of time in the future, 20 years certainly, these systems might not be around. We might not, not all be writing in PHP. Right. Something eventually will replace these systems. And I think that that's okay. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay. Of course. That's good. Um, I have one final question from me. Um, and if you wanted to, um, you know, summarize sort of one top ultralight entrepreneur tip from your CMS, um, what, what would you say it is for uh, Joomla? Uh, one tip. Another. Pardon. To, to me, the absolute strength of, of Joomla, um, the number of vast components that are out there that are constantly changing every day, because technology doesn't stand still. That's why systems change. That's why a lot of us are in business. I'm not saying that we should be changing systems every two months, but it's an essence of what IT is about. I remember when I was on an IBM XT and typing basic code. You know, things do change over time, and we have to constantly grow with it. And from what I've seen over the past couple of years, Joomla has changed with those times by being completely open source, by different components, by thousands and thousands of different brilliant programmers that write the best they can do. And you, as, as a developer, I can pick and choose what works best for my client. Excellent. Ezra? Sure. I think that the, basically be clear about what you want to build. Be clear about your specification as much as possible before you start. I think it always happens that after you, you know, build something before you release it, you want to tweak it and maybe even refactor it. But if you can avoid sort of going in circles, changing your specification, that would be good. And generally with Drupal, uh, don't hack the core. Don't. Uh, if you want to, if you want to extend it, extend it using the APIs in the proper way. If you hack core, uh, you may think that you're saving some time up front, but you'll find that in the long run, you, you've got a much larger problem refactoring your hacked core. All right, Steve. Build a WordPress website. Just build one. If you don't like it, edit it. it it'll be, you'll, be, you'll have one up in a couple of hours. You don't like it, uh, you know, flip it around a little bit, change some stuff. It's real simple to change. There's 4,000 plugins. Pick a couple. Activate them, see, play with them. You don't like them, deactivate them. You want to write a plugin? You can write it in five lines of code. I'm not. A, I'm not even a program. I'm not a programmer, and I, I'm able to write simple plugins. Um, there, I, there probably is not a website out there that has an API that is, doesn't have a WordPress plugin. They come out they're fast because people are able to develop them really quickly. So most social networking sites, sites that, that, that are easy to connect that have APIs. There will be WordPress plugins develop very quickly, uh, usually within a matter of days or weeks. Great. Um, I, yes, one comment. I add one tip to everybody because the discussion today is CMSs, and I think the hacking the core kind of made me think. So don't consider that CMS is the only option. There's commercial CMSs. There's also a time when you shouldn't be using a CMS. Uh, 18 months ago, when we decided uh, the architecture behind it, we looked at Drupal and Joomla. I'm going to spare my opinion, but we decided just to build it from scratch. We know there's lots of modules out there that will create user accounts for very basic stuff. Once you start playing with the core, you're running into a lot of problems later on, and you kind of get stuck in the existing CMS version. So something to consider is that this is really good options for simple or fairly medium um, projects. But if you're building something more complex, you will be probably more, um, I guess, trapped in that platform. So you got to figure out. But these platforms are absolutely great for 95% of the sites. But don't think in today's sessions about CMSs that it must be a CMS. See, actually, I, I think you disagree. Yeah, I, I would disagree. disagree. Yeah, actually, uh, I, think, uh, I think we should take it up in Mustang. Well, being trapped we'll with a proprietary power. piece of software is a hell of a lot worse than being absolutely. trapped on a CMS that's supported by millions of people. Yeah. But, but we don't have to have to return more. I love more We really must conclude. It's not for every project. OK. We're running a lot of time. Thank you for listening. I mean, I...